Hey everyone, it's your boy Graphic back with another video, and today we're going to be spending some time talking about the most underrated skill in Rocket League, and how you can get an advantage on the posing team. But first I want to take time to let everybody know there is a 100 key giveaway in my Discord. The Discord link is in the description below, and good luck. Alright, now let's get started. The most underrated Rocket League skill is definitely, definitely going to be awareness. The ability to know where everyone is on the field has to be one of the most used and most useful skills in the game. Awareness is one of the most underrated skills of any Rocket League player as awareness alone gets a player's free goals and turns their opponent's shots into saves. Don't make the mistake we all once did. Rotate your camera. Turn on an off ball cam to make sure you have the information on the field needed to guide you to a win. Now understand that you don't need to limit this skill. Awareness is not only about reading where everyone is on the field, it also has two insanely positive tools that allow you to get an advantage on the opposing team. Number one, learning your teammates play style. One of the biggest advantages of having awareness is while playing solo queue. Take the first minute of each game to recognize your teammates play style. Are they cutting rotation short? Are they going for kickoffs? Are they staying back? Where are they putting the kickoffs? Are they playing fast? Are they rotating to the back post? Is there something your teammate or teammates are good at that you can use to your advantage? Understanding your teammates' play style and recognizing their strengths and weaknesses will only help you if you are able to do it quickly, as Rocket League games only last for about 5 minutes. Number 2. Learn your opponent's play style. Learning your opponent's play style is another very important step, if not more important. Learning your opponent's playstyle can make that game of Rocket League so much easier. Are they triple committing? Are they leaving the net wide open? Are they chasing the ball mindlessly? What are their kickoffs looking like? Just like you recognize your teammates' strengths and weaknesses, you need to take the time to recognize their team's strengths and weaknesses. Again, you only have a good minute or so to learn about the enemy team before it becomes too late. And it'll become irrelevant in your next ranked game. Many of you have probably noticed how easy it is to make a comeback in almost any playlist, and it's simply because people are able to begin reading their opponents and their teammates. This is one of the most used skills in any competitive Rocket League match, whether you realize it or not. You should always be trying to calculate what the opponent will do and how your teammates will react to their hit. Now let's take some time and look at one of my most recent games. By the way, I am in no way perfect at recognizing my teammates or opponents' playstyle in-game, and if I was, I'm sure I'd be GC by now, as I believe awareness is one of the most important mechanics that you can learn. I will be looking at the first two minutes of this game, as you need to figure out the play styles of everyone in the game as soon as possible. Alright guys, so we're getting started. We're popping into a replay. Uh, it's a pretty old replay of mine. It's just 3v3 gameplay. We're going to kind of see when and where I can you know, better my awareness. Um, obviously, this is a little bit older, so it may be even worse. Uh, but this will probably relate to more of you as this is like C1, C2 gameplay. Um, just focus on what you can notice about my teammates and what I can notice about their teammates and what I can learn. Uh, this will really help you in the future. So let's check it out. I go left here. Uh, he goes right, so it worked out pretty well. Um, he's hitting across. I'm trying to stay with this ball, put it up middle. Um, I'm noticing right away that they sent two. They committed two right there. I don't know if you saw that. They committed two guys right there on the defense there. Um, so you're going to see a lot of double commits this game most likely. Just based on what I saw right there. Uh, Padme's defense is playing a good middle here. So really this is showing me a little bit about my teammates a little bit about their teammates. As you notice, they have a guy coming back all the way from our side. Also shows me they go all the way to our side for boost most likely. So he should be able to... Okay. Shows me Padme's defense. Not an accurate shooter all the time. Um... As I missed the boost and I come back around. Don't know why I didn't go for that ball. Not a big deal here though because we're, we're focused on awareness. Um, I did see Legend there. And you see they're actually in a pretty good setup here. So maybe they have a good uh, offensive attack setup here. I, as I cut, this is rough gameplay. Um, but right here, I you notice how I changed my, my view right away when I go boost. So this is a thing that I've done for a while. Um, it's helpful in any, any level of gameplay. I'm sure everyone knows this by now. But um, just notice that I'm looking back as I, I'm on target with that big boost. 
I'm pressing Y. I'm going back to ball cam so I can see what the heck's going on behind me. Uh, it's just it's just another step of awareness that's very easy to do. Very easy to like keep track of what's going on behind you if you just focus on your ball cam as your main ro way to rotate your camera. Um, it's not a bad bad problem at all. Uh, so right there, they did double commit again. I'm going to go back and show you guys that. Um, I don't know if you saw that. They had Disco and Pops. They both went for that ball. Steve got a good block, so I was able to get there in time. Um, so we they've had a couple double commits by now. I don't know what the heck I'm doing here. I'm rushing all the way to their side, but looks like the ball's coming up. I'm going to try to get a pass, it looks like. And they double committed two in that corner again. I don't know if you guys witnessed this. Pops is here. Look who comes flying in as well. Legend comes flying in. Disco's still in that post way across the field. So really, this should be a free goal. Um, some reason, Padme's defense uh, is in a good spot. Steve is not in a good spot. Uh, Steve should be middle here probably, but it didn't work out um, as he's way back. Uh, this could have been a free goal probably because they are sending a lot of double commits. And this is going to kind of teach me that when I'm in the position as Padme's defense or Steve, I'm going to stay in the middle and kind of wait for the ball because there's a lot of double commits. There's no reason to not be there and ready for this ball. Um, as I rotate ball side, which is not good. Uh, don't learn your gameplay from this. Just learn your awareness. Um, or what you can learn awareness-wise. All right, so Steve's going to take that one. This is good. Um, right here, Padme's defense is in the right position. Yet again, Disco and Legend are on the wall for a double commit. So, obviously, at this point, we know they're double committing nonstop. Um... We need to have people middle and just be ready for the free pass. Like, every single time there's been a free pass middle and we just can't execute, it seems like. Uh, it's a common mistake and problem for C1, C2 players anyway, though. But So there I sent it over to the side. You notice Pops just went from their side mid-boost to that side mid-boost. He did not rotate back at all. They have no rotation at all. They're, uh, they're double committing. This should be, at, at this current rank that I am at now, this would be probably a 4-0 already just based on how bad they are rotating and how uh they're just kind of running around really so um so Padme's defense let's see if he goes for a pass here this will teach me a lot about his gameplay if he can look up the field and see uh you know what's one of his strengths he puts it away from me so strength not not awareness and passing uh upfield it looks like so right now it seems like his biggest strength is probably uh rotations as he is the one that's kind of back post that I'm cutting when I go to front post rotation I just skip him uh, so he has good rotation I'm just kind of ignoring it sadly he puts it to the side uh, Steve is trying to challenge it looks like they double commit there a little bit I went a little slow here disco might be a little faster and that's something I could keep tabs on as he looks like he got up to that pretty quick um, I did still beat him though so maybe he's not too quick um, right here I almost just blocked the heck out of that goal. Um, but looks like Steve's an open net shooter. Pretty good shooter on the open net. And it looks like he can AFK occasionally as well as he's uh, AFK on the start of that one. Uh, Pops is now going for that ball. We got Padme's with a pretty decent clear off the back wall. So we can trust him on the back wall it looks like for now. Um, I'm trying to put that one middle. Ran out of boost. Uh, he comes across. Who's that way back in the back? That is Call Me Steve. So... In the last like three or four times we've seen Call Me Steve, he's kind of in the back, um, not rotating up to the mid midfield to get that pass. So this, I, honestly, at this point would kind of make me believe I need to focus on being a midfielder and shooting instead of maybe getting the passes out because we're not gonna have a we're not gonna have a shooter. So focus on getting midfield here and being ready for a pass is probably the best way to take advantage of the situation um, because he does. Seems like he's playing aggressive occasionally, but the problem is he's not um, not coming back to midfield fast enough, so we don't have any shooter. Disco's going for a few bumps. I just flipped the ball up. Pops, I don't know if you guys noticed, Pops is on the ball nonstop and legend. Those two guys are on the ball at all times, so if, if they're not on the ball, they're probably coming. So that means if one other guy's on the ball, who is his name? Disco, is that his Disco? If he's on the ball, I can take advantage of that and just kind of play it slow, and I'm assuming we'll get a double commit because Legend and Pop, they come flying up every time as fast as they can. 
Um, as you can see, my teammates are actually playing a good rotational here. They're, we got Call Me Steve kind of front post and Padme's defense kind of back post. Not amazing positioning, but pretty dang good. Um, so right here, I'm going to try to get it middle, but we don't really have anyone, so I'm taking it all the way across. Not great. Pops is obviously there. Uh, let's see. Call Me Steve passes it up. I'm going to try to put this one middle. It looks like nobody's there middle. Um, Padme's defense actually kind of rotated on the right side. Padme's looks like he has good rotation. He kind of really struggles with the passing area in this so far um, as he's not really in the position for a pass. Most of the time, he doesn't really understand, like, you know, if the ball's coming to me, I'm probably not going to be able to shoot from that position, so I'm going to be looking for a pass. And he could be that pass, but he's not there. Um, so at this point, we've kind of figured everybody out on the field. We know a little bit about Steve. We know a little bit about Padme's defense. We know a little bit about Legend. We know a little bit about Pop. We don't know a little uh, bit about Disco. Um, Disco is the one that we don't know too much about right now. Um, let's see. He's going for that ball. He's a little, honestly, from what I just saw right there, he's a little slow. Uh, that should not have been a ball he even dreamt about going for. Steve should have hit the heck out of that. Um, but Steve is also a little slow, it looks like there. So he might have been a low on boost, but we don't know. Um, I mean, I could, I could look it up and see, but in game, we wouldn't know that situation. So let's see here. No, he has full boost. He should have he should have beat Disco way to this ball. Um, he was Disco was up early, um, but like the ball is really far away, so Steve should have hit that early um, and right underneath him or to the side. So not a big deal though. It looks like I'm able to get back to this, and we're about two minutes fifty seconds in. So really at this point, um, you kind of got to have all of everybody figured out if you want to take full advantage of the situation. Um, but right here, uh, looks like they're you know two or three in a corner again. It kind of looks like it might work out. Didn't work out, but it looks like it was about to work out there as they are sending everybody to these corners at this point. Um, awareness uh, is a big, big ordeal. So you notice, like, as I'm going to this boost yet again, I just want you guys to realize that when I'm going to this boost, I am looking back at the ball cam yet again to see what's happening at all times. Switching it back on and forth, back and forth to make sure I get the actual boost itself and don't do a miss like usual. Um, but just having that awareness, like Pops is on this ball, they have nobody back. This is something I need to take advantage of. Um, I need to either jump, I probably should have jumped by now, honestly, and force Pop to try to get get a block, but it's really, really hard block as the ball is like, you know, pretty high up in front of him, uh, above him. So, really they have nobody back. I don't have any teammates to pass to though, so I should try to go fast probably there and try not to go slow. I did go to the slow option it looks like, um... As they send Legend across that, uh, I don't know if you guys saw that. Let's just take a look real quick, and then we'll probably call it here on the uh, the awareness training of this gameplay. Um, so, see what happens is Disco comes from ball side, bumps me. Legend comes from across back post, kind of. Uh, jumps over Pops to hit the ball. Disco hits it back center. I mean, um, which is something new and very good uh but i think we need to just take a minute to realize how much they're double committing triple committing not doing rotational at all uh we could really be taking advantage of this um unfortunately we're not doing much better i i noticed that we don't have people in the position uh to pass to i have had chances to pass but there's nobody to pass to um i'm sure the same situation has happened for both of them where they've looked for a pass but there's nothing there so really the awareness here does help um, show me what I need to improve on um, and shows me kind of what I'm looking for, uh, what what's going on, what's wrong with um, my teammates' gameplay and what's wrong with their gameplay and what's wrong with my gameplay. Um, it kind of shows you really kind of what needs to be done to win this game or finish this game out. So right there they finally had a guy that was able to block that shot. I was middle. I started the change how I was playing and kind of sat middle for a little bit and looks like they finally had somebody back post to get that safe but awareness really does uh improve your gameplay to an extent that I can't even describe right here you didn't see many free shots or uh free saves like you know uh, last second saves because of my awareness but I can't express enough how much that does happen where you just take a look at the ball cam go off of ball cam swivel your your screen around a little bit make sure you're looking around at all times get that awareness so you can really see what's going on on the field you can really really find out you know who's got the boost who doesn't have the boost who's got one boost you know you can 
you can uh, communicate with your your teammates if you're playing and you're not just playing solo queue, and you can really get that information out there on the field. Um, it's really important. I hope you guys understand the importance of awareness uh, after this video, and I hope you guys take the time to try to learn a little bit more about what's going on on the field. Just find the information and kind of retain it. Uh, I did go about three minutes. I, mean, I went about four minutes into this video um, or into this gameplay. And you really only have about two or three minutes to really kind of find out what's going on and to make a difference in the rest of the game. So I hope you guys like today's video and I hope you guys subscribe and there's a hundred key giveaway going on in the discord below. There is a discord join link and there's a, uh, the contest is also down there so you can join the hundred key giveaway. And I do replay analysis guys for free. Um, there's a replay analysis text channel in the discord that is also linked below. Like I just said, and you can get your replay analysis uh, and analyze for free. So check that out. Check out the Discord. Join up. And hopefully you guys like the content and subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. Later. So you can join the 100 key giveaway. And I do replay analysis, guys, for free. Um, there's a replay analysis text channel in the Discord that is also linked below, like I just said. And